Hello and welcome to My Security TV. My name is Chris Cubbage and we're at AusCert 2012, an information security conference here on the Gold Coast. I'm joined by Chris Poulos, Vice President for Enterprise Security Products for HP, Asia Pacific and Japan. Chris, thanks for joining me. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, Chris, in terms of what you're seeing, uh, trends in the market, security trends uh, yes. in the market, what, what are some of the key trends that you see? Well, three things that come to mind immediately. I think social media is one, uh, very vulnerable at this point in time. Uh, the next is mobility, as we in increase the, uh, the uh, footprint of a, an organisation outside its eggshell, that certainly is another. I think fishing still is, and spear fishing in particular, tends to be a very major concern uh, for very targeted situations. And what, to, what, what are you actually seeing in terms of the spear phishing? I've heard very good stories around um, very specific research on individuals that they can get hobbies or uh, associated interests in that area. Send them an email with uh, particular databases or websites that they've been uh, potentially visiting and then do a very targeted invitation of some sort to click on a web link and therefore enacting some sort of uh, uh, poison ivy situation. And in a way I suppose that's trending back into the social media aspect where social media exactly. is being used? And of course social media is just another avenue which people are using technology for and therefore you get another um, particular situation where you can actually spearfish someone. And in terms of HP, I mean it's a well-known brand internationally but yes. here in Australia as well. What are the, some of the key products and services that HP... Uh, so HP are... recently, Chris, has uh, entered the security market as a holistic security player. We uh, have joined forces with uh, three organisations, uh, ArcSight, which is a security information event management um, product, Tipping Point, which is IDS and IPS, and Fortify, which is application security, forming the enterprise security products division. And certainly we are going to market in a major way supplying enterprise security to enterprise corporations mainly. Your client profiles are, are large enterprises? Typically large and into the medium of course because we do have cloud and managed security service provision so it would go down to the very small businesses as well who would take uh, a monthly sort of um, service from a managed security provider that would be a partner of ours who's taken on our technology in order to provide that service to the, to the market. And, and you mentioned cloud, what are some of the key challenges in terms of security that uh, the cloud computing space offers? Well the cloud itself, I mean the word conjures up softness and, uh, and not uh, encased hard stuff, but certainly uh, within, within the actual uh, specifics of the cloud we are very serious about the way we want to protect our customers who use those services. Uh, we're also very cognizant of the fact that we don't want to build a hundred dollar fence to protect a one dollar horse. So we've got to be very careful as how much security you do put in there and it's going to be very pointed towards the applications that are very vulnerable. And in terms of, I mean, cloud traditionally has been, you know, there's security concerns around using the cloud, but are you finding indeed uh, the cloud offers more functionality and more tailoring in terms of security for organisations? Um, at the moment, I, I haven't seen that evident, uh, but certainly in terms of the applications, yes, it does provide far, far more scope. Um, but I think right now that's the general basic functions that it's delivering, not to the enterprises, but to the, it could be mail or um, you know, other services that they can actually outsource. But certainly I know managed security service providers are really starting to provide a lot of services in this space. In particular, compliance needs, um, uh, uh, log, log management, <coughs> pardon me, and, um, and, and general awareness of a dashboard of what's going on in their organisation. In terms of compliance and companies bringing on more security services or you know, giving, the, giving it due attention anyway, are you finding it's driven by compliance or risk or, or a mixture of both? I think certainly compliance in the US is a very important factor. In Australia in particular at the moment, I don't think it's a major driver, although PCI compliance has got some teeth now. I think really risk is the issue and it's how big the risk appetite is for an organisation. Of course the large banks have got a lot at risk. They've got money at risk, they've got customer reputation at risk. And so they'll, may, they'll probably invest greatly into this in the security space. Um, lower organisations, their risk isn't as high. Applications aren't that critical. It might be a, a small loan application online or something like that. They're not too concerned if it goes down. The customer base isn't large. Uh, Chris, do you want to talk us through what uh, the security intelligence platform involves? Sure. I, I guess um, 
traditionally what, what uh, organisations have been doing is building layers and layers of security, you know, walls and walls and walls, and hopefully the bullet doesn't get through and it gets retarded at the end. But I think that's a very expensive and probably a not a modern way of actually solving the problem. So what we look at is risk. Risk of the applications, where they sit in particular parts of the organisation, are they customer facing, are they inward facing? How much appetite does that application have? So we're looking at security information and risk management um, for our go-to-market play, trying to ascertain what the risk level is. So we do a lot of research in terms of what logs are required in order to um, understand what the risk profile is and then, of course, display that uh, on a heat map. In, in, a, in a way, it, it's actually helping organisations understand their business better by identifying the key information that they need to protect as well as the, the areas of their business that are at higher risk. That's excellent, Chris. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, I think what's, what's happened is that if we can just understand where the security footprint is at the moment, that gives them some visibility. And logs is a very major initiative in order to get that understanding. And then, of course, map that against what the applications they have and it's understanding what risk those applications do provide. It could be a very large home loan application online. They need to protect that because that's got money going through it and customer facing initiatives. They'll put that as a high risk. So logs are very important to understand how that sits. Now, many times, many panes of glass have been um, taken to understand what a security footprint is. We're trying to bring that up into a single pane of glass so the customer can get complete visibility from one screen. And you mentioned the banking finance sectors. What other key sectors do you see as, as key drivers in this We've space? We've seen certainly resources, um, uh, telcos, from two points of view, telco from their own protection, but also from a service provision point of view as well. And the three major areas that I've seen in particular that are, that are uh, knocking on our door. Um, and Chris, in terms of, we, we discussed compliance and versus risk, why would compliance be so important? Compliance is a way which we can measure the uh, health of an organisation against uh, securities and investment corporations like SEC and I think that corporations need to adhere to those and that's why we need to be able to provide logs that would do, give us a, an indication of where their compliance level is up to at any point in time. All our products have many varieties of compliance um, programs in order to, to um, report on like um, HIPAA, uh, PCI, um, um, Sarbanes-Oxley, etc, etc. So it is very important because it gives us that minimum standard by which organisations can be trusted in the way they uh, do about their business. And HP, as you mentioned, uh, is coming in to the market or, or has been in the market for, for many years, but in terms of the security space... It will certainly have been in the market for many years in terms of its individual product sets. HP is an organisation now um, Meg Whitman, our CEO, she's uh, mentioned three major initiatives. One is cloud, two is information management, and three is security. We are very focused on security, and hence our investment in already three platforms that we've, um, we've bought, so ArcSight, Tipping Point and Fortify, and let me tell you, there's probably more. Chris, thanks very much for joining My me, pleasure, and Chris. all the very best for HP. Thank you very much.